Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video we'll be talking about Virastra substitution. So what is this particular fancy kind of substitution? Why is it so particularly named? Well the actual substitution itself is named after, named after a, fa a famous mathematician called Karl Virastras. Now why is this particular substitution so important and you know why is this so widely used? So you know let's kind of just talk about this and talk about, you know, what this is all about. So this is useful when you have integrals that involve trigonometric functions. And this is a technique that can be used to evaluate some integrals that involves trigonometric functions in terms of rational valued expressions in order to actually evaluate the integral. Now, the question is, you know, how do we do that? So Let's just kind of explain this with an example. So what I'm trying to say is suppose we have this particular integral right here. So we have the integral of one over two plus d cosine of x times dx. Now, we can't really approach this with our old kind of techniques that we learned already in the past. And the reason for that is because, well, how, there isn't really a good way to approach this because you can't make this into a partial fraction because it's not a polynomial or and this isn't really a rational expression. You can't transform it any, in, in any way. You can't really use integration parts here. You can't really do anything here. So how do you, you know, approach this? So one way is to use this Virastra substitution in a particular way. Now the question is, you know, what is this? How does this work? So let me just make a particular substitution. Suppose that t is equal to tangent of x over 2. Now don't worry where this comes from. This is that's supposed to be a very obvious technique. That's why it's named after a mathematician. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and draw out a triangle. So like so. And there we go. Okay, so now if you make a triangle, well, that's going to be our angle. This time it's tan of x over 2. So x over 2 would go here, and then tangent is opposite of our adjacent. So a t would go here, a 1 would go here, and then over here we would get 1 plus t squared. Okay, so now what does this mean? Well, that means we can get an, ex we can get an expression for sine of x over 2 and cosine of x over 2. So let's just write that down here. So for example, sine of x over 2 would be equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So this would be equal to t over the square root of 1 plus t squared. And then cosine of theta, or cosine of x over 2, sorry, would be equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse. So it'd be 1 over the square root of 1 plus t squared. Now, what can we do here? Well, this also means that dt, we can take the derivative of both sides and solve that way. But I'm not going to calculate dt just yet, and you'll see very quickly why we're not going to do that just yet. Okay, now, how can we use this to write an expression for sine and cosine in terms of rational expressions? Because right now, I managed to convert sine and cosine into rational expressions, which is good, but we can do a little bit better than that. So one thing is that we know that sine of 2x, for example, is equal to 2 sine of x times the cosine of x. But then if we just manipulate this a little bit, we get that sine of x is equal to 2 sine of x over 2 times cosine of x over 2. Okay, well, why is this helpful? Well, the reason this is helpful is because we know expressions for sine and cosine of x over 2. It's right there. So that means we can rewrite this in the following way. We can write this as 2 times t over the square root of 1 plus t squared times d cosine. So 1 over the square root of 1 plus t squared. And then if you go ahead and multiply these together, we get the following expression. So we're going to get 2t 
over the square root of 1 plus t squared. Very interesting. So we managed to now convert psi into a rational expression. This is very good. Can we do a similar thing for cosine? Yes, we can. So we know that cosine of 2x, for example, is equal to 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. So how does this help us? Well, this means that with some slight manipulation, we can say that cosine of x, by definition, using very similar kind of logic, is 2 cosine squared of x over 2 minus 1. Okay, well, how does this help us? Well, once again, we know an expression for cosine of x over 2. It's right here. So that means, well, this integral, or not this integral, but this identity now becomes cosine of x is equal to 2 times 1 over 1 plus t squared minus 1. And if we simplify this down into a single fraction, well, we're going to get... 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. So this is just me simplifying this top because we can, you know, we can combine that, we can make a 2, we can make this called 1 fraction and so on. But I'm not going to do that work because it's, it's just a waste of time. So anyways, so we end up with our expression for cosine in terms of rational function. Once again, very interesting. Okay, can we write the dx in terms of dt? Yes, we can do that too. We know that t equals tan of x over 2. So if we differentiate, we're going to get dt is equal to secant squared of x over 2 times 1 half. And then, of course, over here we'll get dx. Okay. Well, secant squared is the same thing as 1 over cosine, so we're just going to get dx on the top, and then on the bottom, we'll get, uh, we can write dx right now, actually. Okay, on the bottom, we'll just get 2 cosine squared of x over 2. Once again, very interesting. So, if you go ahead and proceed with this, well, we know an expression for cosine squared of x over 2, because we know an expression for cosine of x over 2, so we can just square this thing. So if we go ahead and do that, we're going to get dx over 2 times 1 over 1 plus t squared. Okay, but then what is this thing? Well, that means this is dt. That's dt. Okay, so what does this mean? This means we get dt is equal to t squared plus 1 over 2 times dx. But then this directly implies that 2 over t squared plus 1 dt equals dx. Very nice. Okay, so that means we managed to get expressions for dt, dx, and... Sorry, let me correct that. dt, cosine, and sine. So this is interesting because now we have expressed all the rational expressions and the differential quantity exclusively in terms of rational expressions. And that is Virastra's substitution. So, and I might be butchering that pronunciation, and I do apologize if I am, but I am trying my best here. So sine of 2x is 2t over 1 plus t squared. And then let's see. So here we get cosine of x is equal to 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. And finally, uh, dt, or alternatively, 2 over t squared plus 1 dt equals dx. This is very nice because now we can write any integral that involves, well, rational functions of sines and cosines in, in terms of rational expressions of just single variables. That's very nice. So let's go ahead and continue with this integral. So let me just paste it right here and proceed with our, well, method. 
Okay, well now this gives us the integral of 1 over 2 plus, well the cosine integral is going to be 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared times dx, but dx by, by definition is 2 over t squared plus 1. And that's a dt. Okay, now let's proceed with this thing. So this is going to be equal to the integral of 1 plus t squared plus 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. And then on here, we, that's going to be a 1 times 2 over t squared plus 1 times dt. Okay, so if we go in and flip this thing, well, this is going to give us the integral of 1 plus t squared over the t squares here cancel out, and this just becomes a 2 on the bottom, so we get 2 over here. And let's take a look now. So if we go ahead and expand all of this, we'll get the following. So I'll just make sure we did that correctly. So over here, we're going to get 2 over t squared plus 1. Okay. So on the bottom, so that was a mistake. That should be fixed a little bit. So if you go ahead and fix that up, that's going to be 2 plus 2t two squared. plus 1 minus t squared. That's going to be with the one on the bottom. So let's go and fix all that because that was a bit incorrect. That's going to be dt. Okay, on the over on the top, that's going to be 1 plus t squared. So that part has not changed anyway. And then on the bottom, we'll get 2t squared minus t squared. That's just t squared. And then that's going to be a tree on the bottom. Okay, these cancel. So now we get the integral of 2 over t squared plus 3 times dt. Okay, now what we can do is factor the 2 and 3 out from the numerator and denominator respectively. So we get 2 over 3 integral of 1 over... 3 times 1 over 3 t squared plus 1 dt. Okay, well, that takes care of that particular integral. So let's just go ahead and do that. And I believe that's, yeah, okay, now that's correct. Okay, now we can pull the 3 out completely. So we'll get 2 over 3 integral of 1 over. 1 over 3 t squared plus 1 times dt. Okay, so now what we can do is approach the rest of this integral the same way we did in the past. So we can now put the 1 over 3 inside the t. So that's going to give us 1 over the square root of 3 times t all squared plus 1 dt. Okay, so now we can do a u substitution on this. So u is equal to 1 over the square root of 3 times t. So that means du is equal to 1 over the square root of 3 times dt. But then this directly implies that root 3 times du equals dt. So what does this mean? This means that we get 2 over... 3 times the integral of u squared plus 1 and then dt, that's just going to be root 3 and then du over here. Okay, this 3 and this root 3 here will slightly cancel out, so we're going to get 2 over root 3 on the bottom. And then, if you continue, we'll get 1 over u squared plus 1 times du. But then this is just going to be arctan, so we just get 2 over root 3 
arctan of u plus a constant. But then this is going to be equal to 2 over root 3 tan inverse of u, but then u equals 1 over root 3 times t plus a constant. But then t, if you go back all the way up back here, is equal to tan of x over 2, meaning that we can continue. So if we go ahead and continue with this, we'll get tan inverse of 1 over root 3 tan inverse of x over 2 plus a constant. And that right there will be our integral. And it should be a tan, not a tan inverse. Yeah. And that right there will be our final integral for this particular question. So let me just go ahead and close that off as well. All right. And that right there is our final answer. So this is a particularly interesting integration technique in the sense that it requires a lot more thought process. But all you need to really know is this part, to be honest. I mostly just wrote the parts above just as a bit of derivation. But the key kind of substitution that you need to be aware of is just mostly this part. So if you know this substitution, any integral involving rational expressions of trigonometric functions shouldn't be too ter terribly difficult. And that's it for that question. And I'm not going to do any more examples because this isn't a topic that's widely taught in a calculus class generally. But nevertheless, it's one of the more interesting kind of techniques of integration that I learned myself over the years. And I thought this was a good video to kind of close off integrals and different and whatnot on. So with that, I will see you all in the next video. Thank you all so much and have a great day. If this video helped you, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, if, the, and otherwise if, you, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. Thank you.